I remember when I was first diagnosed, I said, no way to psychiatrists, any of the services here. And that was a big mistake because I started to use them about five years after being diagnosed and <laughs> they turned my life around and made fighting this disease so much easier. Listen to yourself. Be positive. Stay away from... There's a lot of stuff you're going to read on the internet and all that, but just be positive in yourself and anything wrong. Always, like, let your doctor know when you've got the tiniest little thing. You may think it's nothing, but get it checked out. Uh, you know, one thing that was really uh, useful f for me was um, I always had someone with me early on when I had appointments with the oncologist, usually someone like my wife who would actually take notes during our appointments. I think that's quite important because when you're there yourself, you're sort of, you're just trying to take it in, you're not going to remember everything. But there's important information being told to you. Uh, so if you have someone that's going to take notes, you can look at the information after the fact and um, have, a, have a fuller picture. The best thing you can do for the person you're taking care of is be with them, support them in whatever way they need you, whether it be sitting with them, talking to them, anyway. One, one, one piece of advice that I would have is, so people are, people are still weird about cancer, right? You hear someone has cancer, you don't really know what to say. It's like, it's, it's, a, it's a tricky uh, kind of subject to broach for somebody. In my case, it was almost always welcome if someone brought it up. So I didn't have to bring it up. It's kind of the elephant in the room, right? You have cancer, but you don't want to tell people. I liked it personally when people said, oh, you know, I heard about your diagnosis, how are you doing? I, I find it really um, useful for me to talk about it. And um, so I, you know, maybe that's a misconception that cancer patients don't want to talk. We do want to, at least I didn't want to talk about it. So don't, maybe don't be afraid to um, approach your loved one or your friend who has cancer. And, uh, uh, you know, maybe, maybe they don't want to talk about it, but maybe they do. I wanted to talk about it. So, so um, don't be afraid to broach the subject. If you see anything, like me, myself, when I first found it, it was a little dot. I thought it was a freckle, but it changed, and, and I noticed it changing. And don't be afraid, I want, you know, to get it checked out. You're not wasting the doctor's time, and you're better off when you do, so. Another thing I would say is when, when I was going through uh, treatment, um, I pushed myself too hard, quite frankly. Like I continued to work as much as I could. I, I kept going to the gym. I, I really tried to sort of ignore the illness and push through it and ply through it because in the past that's really helped me in my life. But I find with cancer, um, it doesn't really work. You really, you know, you have to take it. I didn't really maybe take it as seriously as I should have. So um, if I had to go through it again, I definitely would have slowed things down. You can get your life back, but you, you just have to make some adjustments along the way and that's something I kind of learned the hard way. All melanoma patients should know that there is light at the end of the tunnel. I, I have been here for a very long time fighting this disease for coming on seven years now and doing it through my teens when I'm supposed to be, you know, partying, young, in school doing all those kind of things, but I'm not. And uh, I think that's okay. I've learned a whole different part of education through my disease. There is life beyond just being sick. It should not control what you do. And remember that it's just part of you. It's not who you are. Thank you.